All right, welcome back to Simdog. Here we go, episode 18. I'm not sure actually. It's it's getting up there though. It's getting up there. All right, so we actually um so it's 4:22 in the morning. This is like perfect. There is this bleak order. Uh, if we get tired of spin fishing or if it slows down into the hot part of the day, we could maybe get that in. I always like to see that. But mostly I want to just take our uh, normal spinning setup here, see what we can get into. All right, I was going to go try the 37 spot. Been hearing good things, so I wanted to try it for myself. Which I think we fished down here on our last leveling guide a little bit, but uh, this is certainly a spot I have fished in before. Um, and it's perfect time of day to start. I did notice there was that brown trout order. I guess the question is, will it? Um, Will there be brown trout very active down here? That I'm not sure. I think it might be a little more chub and grayling. We might have to, to kind of wander down to the other side if we want to try to get the brown trout. Sorry, the volume is just, for spin fishing, I like it a little, a little louder. For everything else, I don't mind it being a little quieter. I want to enjoy my coffee here. So we'll probably just do some straight retrieval. Nothing fancy here to start off. I also, before leaving Old Berg to travel here from our last chapter, I did purchase the Hornet 3. Kind of had my eye on this one. I've been wanting to try it. Because um, I'm not sure that I've used the Hornet 3 very much, even on my main account. And I had seen it pop up a couple times lately. Not so much on... Um, you know, like VK or anything like that, where people were actually saying like, this is what I used and caught a lot of good fish, but more just seeing it pop up on the weekly list occasionally at different points in the week. So I thought, Hey, let's, let's try it. Now, one thing we do potentially run into down here more often than uh, over on the North side of the Island where we've been fishing either at camp or the north side where we've been fishing more lately is um, we potentially run into the possibility of timing. I think this is gonna be just a healthy chub, right? Just a healthy little chub. Oh, let's just go ahead and dig one time before we, since we just drank some tea, keep building up those red worms. Try one more cast with this, and then we'll switch back. So one thing we were doing the other day on stream at um, somebody's suggestion, first of all, we've been trying to let it drift a lot longer on the initial cast, and then kind of doing much faster spin retrieval speed. Oh, it is touching bottom. I don't love that on these spinner baits. Maybe we just pause for less time. But basically doing like this, where we're just doing a rotation or two. And um, working in some pauses. The game just seems to work in such a way that even on these spinner baits, you often see fish biting on or right after a, a, of the drop.
It sounds like some people do this pretty consistently. This is the way they fish with spinner baits. Belaya, which doesn't surprise me too much. I, I do think the drops are really important. And I think after Yama came out, we spent, a, you know, you spend a lot more time at Yama doing similar fishing to Belaya in some ways. And so you start to pick up on some of these little techniques. This is almost like we're doing a, a jig step except with the spinner bait, right? But ultimately, I think I still prefer, ooh, there we go, right at the end. Uh, I, I prefer to at least, you know, work in a healthy amount of more like traditional with these spinner baits, just um, letting them sit for a minute and then just pulling it in pretty straight with occasional speed ups. And then, you know, according to how I'm feeling, I might, I might pause for a, a couple heartbeats after the speed up. Even if we go try that other spot briefly or for a little bit, I'd be really curious how it co goes down here in the early evening. Ooh, Cause it seems really good in the morning, which sometimes that means it can be pretty good in the evening too. I say really good. It seems like it's got the potential down here. We've got the potential to hook in some larger fish. Now, so far that has mostly meant chub for us. But I think nice grayling is going to also be possible. There's another chub. I would say trophying chub down here is a real possibility. And that would be an adventure on this uh, setup. An absolute adventure. Oh, it's too bad. You hate to see that. That was a nice size again. Not as big, but nice size. And right now, you know, we're casting a lot with the Spiker 18. And I think it makes sense for that to be the perhaps your main lure right now if you've saved up enough to get that it is doing really well but i just think it's fun to switch it up and there are a lot of other lures that are also working reasonably well so man same thing again Ooh, same fish pop back on that's great it's chasing it so that is a grayling that was on the horn at one on the drop again. So even if you do consistent reel, like, you know, retrieval like that, if you're not getting, if you're not getting the bites, work in a pause or, or two. Again, some people pause constantly, but I don't know that that's necessarily necessary, but work in a pause here or there. Man, I hope this isn't a pike or something about to snap our line. Impressed with the quality of this little G2. It's not even showing. It didn't even start to catch fire there or give us the warning. We'll see if it does here. I was expecting to have to turn the drag down there just to keep it from, you know, starting to show the warning symbol. 
trying to just make there it was so that was a pike all right what lure was that it was the it was the hornet one that was most certainly a pike so we do have one backup um man that'd have been fun to get that one in that was going to be a a decent um a decent pike i would say i wonder if they have that one here they do oh that's great let's go ahead and get it back up and i don't mind um you know it's just the price of doing business i don't mind replacing that right now we'll get that hunter right back all right so let's go down to this spot over here and um was this about it yeah this is about it and let's just see while it's still like the nice time of day morning i don't know why but i had a feeling that was a pike i don't know if it, i'd have to go back and watch the vod it might have flashed its body for a second but it just i, I was like oh no it's, it's, i just had this sense like oh it's a pike Now, I don't think there's going to be pike down here unless we get hooked up right next to the shore. Then there might be a little bit of a possibility. Uh, this is a nice grayling. Um, but down here is where we were seeing occasional brown trout, even at the spot farther down there as well. But that's why I was coming down just in case we got on a brown trout run. We just need a couple 500 gram ones or something like that for the cafe. We're doing 25 retrieval. Sometimes I will go a little faster, a little slower, especially slower with these spinner baits. Sometimes that will really make a difference. But as a starting point, and this has been true for me since I first started playing this game or spin fishing, 25 has always been my starting point. I don't know why. Uh, I guess maybe it's because it's in the middle, but uh, I will often start with 25. Like if I'm jig stepping, a lot of times my starting point is 25. And then just kind of go from there. You don't want to get locked into just one speed, but it's not a bad place to, to start, in my opinion. Tofu has been on the bellows this weekend. Catching those bleak and then catching those bellows. That is a lucrative business, bellow fishing. All right. Is this big enough? yes all right so we should double check i mean we don't want to waste time because it's still morning but we should double check if it's 500 or 600 gram it's a grayling again And I, I won't let that pike scare me away from that other spot. We'll, we'll go back down there for sure. Um, but perhaps not till late afternoon, early evening, just so we can have an attempt at this brown trout. And I also kind of want to go test the bleak. 
unless they're just really popping off, we might not be able to do five in that short amount of a time, but just to test it for a minute, it'd be fun. love to see it so I should have I should have talked about this in the beginning but um, a little bit lucky on the weather this was the one day that's a little lower these other days are a little warmer again so I think the warmer it is the less likely I am at least to have a decent day here at Belaya but when I saw that the high was supposed to be 15 for this day I think that's just in the threshold of Belaya being a little more decent for spin. But as you've seen in past episodes, even the days where it hasn't been ideal temp, we've still, I mean, it's been a little boring spin fishing, but we're still making okay silver. And between bleak or rough, kind of complementing what we're doing over here, um, we've really been able to do quite well silver wise at Belaya. I think more more so than any other time I've leveled through Belaya, which of course this wasn't around for my main or even my main alt account, but more so than any other time, like I kind of get why people these days talk about Belaya. It's just like once you get to Belaya, you can um, have a different kind of fun and, and also do really well silver, silver wise. grayling again yeah they, they've gotten small it's kind of a time of day thing right you never know but that's, that's how it's going to tend to look this time of day all right that's what we want just needs to be bigger Making sure we've used all our points. We should do a we should do a review at the beginning of one of these chapters. We should sort of review where we put points and why we did it that way. Slightly different than I do sometimes, just because we're be, trying to be a little bit more jack of all trades in this leveling guide. Even though we've done a lot of float fishing, that's the one thing. Other than the reel, we haven't put any points towards float but our float fishing has mostly been such small fish. I don't know how much it really impacts it because typically we're just doing it to try to fill cafe orders and such. And our first trophy here at least was that little bleak. So can really see the difference if we just cast a little more northeast we at least open ourselves up to a much better chance of seeing a brown trout where if we cast southeast or straight east so much more likely to just be grayling is how it appears chub
1230. I'd say this is a good time to, if we're going to do a little bit of bleak fishing just to see what's going on, this would be a good time to do it. We're going to throw out worm. We could also do red worm, but I think we'll just do worm at the same time. In fact, I'm going to put this on basic bottom just to mix it up and even do this one a little shorter at eight. We'll probably, you know, have a chance of getting occasional uh, even a rough or something, and even though it's daytime. And this is already set up. So we're at 17 centimeter float. And we don't have to go too far out at this point. Also float left to right. This is where we got the trophy over the weekend. Let's see how active it is though. And of course we're doing it at this time of day because this is when the spin fishing is the most miserable potentially. But it's also true of fishing for these kind of fish. I mean, the bleak would be bigger and faster bite rate if we fish for them uh, in the morning or you know in the early evening, just like the spin fishing is better. Pretty good way to, if you do this long enough, just have a chance to hit just random cafe orders. I mean, if there's perch, gibble, crucian, roach, bleak, rough cafe orders here at winding, you know, fishing on this uh, western side of this map. We'll typically get you there. I want to, before we try a different bait for bleak, I actually kind of want to try to think um, if perhaps sometimes, I think it normally is up there. Just want to try something a little different just to see. I wonder if this is more of the classic bleak spot that I'm used to. Um, I know recently people have been fishing a little farther north where we have our feeder rods, but I think when I used to do bleak bait fish, it might've been more along here. Oh, I just totally missed that. Right at the edge of this first 
the major islands. Look at this. This is like this bite rate is it's suddenly active, you know. This might have been it. I do want to get back to spinning pretty quickly though, because I think we start our time down where the brown brown trout potential is, and then we work our way back to where we call where we lost the lure to the pike. But this is it. This is the bleak spot. Uh, we got our trophy further north, and and they're definitely active down there a little bit. But you can already tell, like the activity down here is. It's just consistent. And on my main account, other than the winding pond, this is probably my favorite spot to throw out a couple of float sticks and um, and just grind out bleak to get bait for bellows and that kind of stuff. I knew that spot while it was working, I knew it wasn't the spot I was used to. Yeah, this is it. Just bleak after bleak. And this is on pearl barley. I mean, you know, if you have flies, you can also use the horsefly, bloodworm, maggots. There's lots of things you can use. Uh, I like pearl barley the best as a backup for flies, but there might be a good argument for the other options as well. Of course, once you have once you have access to Volkov, or you know, just get those can get flies consistently. Uh, or afford the larger volumes of fly that often becomes just the best the best bleak bait bleak bait I'm pretty sure there were not any rough cafe orders so again we were just kind of doing this for fun not um, if there had been cafe orders it would have been really nice to hit those rough again I think at Belaya you can almost catch rough 24 7 it's it's pretty cool get those trophies at night one of these days I'm going to get us a second a second telestick one that's a little longer that gives us a little bit more options may get one that's a little stronger somebody in, in over the weekend on the stream was telling me how much fun they have using a telestick at quarry uh, which was a new one for me and they're using i think it was caddisfly so they're not only catching the small stuff but sometimes they're getting some of the larger stuff on float as well so to have a chance you'd want at least a little bit of an upgrade over this uh the starter one I think that one's a little too far cast out. You really don't have to go super far in this spot to hit them. Just my favorite fish to float fish for at low levels. It is stress-free. It really teaches you the basics of float fishing without going through all the agony of crucian gibble roach nibbles uh, that can just be so trying as a new player. These and dace, sometimes rough, will bite fairly quickly, but some of these small fish, it's just, it's quick, it's really nice. Drifted a little further, but we still got one. All right, we really do need to get spin fishing again. I know we're going to be, you know, we're going to be like one off the cafe order, two off or something, but. I think it was five. 
I just don't remember how big the five had to be. You'll notice I don't use the float window. I do have it set up, especially on my main account. I think it's that way on this one too now, but if it gets more than 10 or 15 meters away, the float window will pop up just so that you have a little bit more clearer view at distance. Um, but I, I would much rather see the actual float and kind of see it in the context of the consistency. And I guess it's just what I'm used to. So. I was trying to get one more marker just in case, but we really do have to go. Uh, we should just toss horsefly one time, right? I don't believe that. We caught that fish. Oh, guess we'll do uh, two more cast because the bait didn't change. Wish that was a bleak man. So horsefly also getting very, very quick activity, just like pearl barley was. patient for a second here we'll, we'll probably get a bite still see if it pays off ah oh, what a miss that was just a little too quick on some of those pulls it's it's okay to give them a second okay so double check cafe Oh, it's five from 34. We're actually golden here. So that's nice. It's extra 21 silver. Um, yeah, wait, what was the, oh yeah, brown trout, brown trout opportunity here. to our, our little brown trout nest and see what we can do. It's amazing how close that was to being 500 grams. I mean, felt so small but it was 363 all right if this is the brown trout we're set it's not
job. Chubs were as much worth as much as graylings and brown trout. This would have been an exceptionally good day. Last cast before we go move down to the other spot to finish off there. And we're going to try the lots of pausing method here. Not as good just because of how far it drifted. Grayling. Yeah, we're definitely catching fish down here. It's just the grayling chub variety, it seems like. Wondering if I want to switch back to Hornet or are we worried about Pike down here? All right, let's just slow it down a little bit, but we won't pause. We go 18 here. The only pause will be on the front and not for long. We don't want it to hit bottom. Then we're just going to do steady all the way in, I think. Yeah, there we go. 
slow it down a little bit. You never know. Sometimes with these spinners, it seems like slowing it down can be a good idea. I think we're also less likely to get pike when we slow it down. A little marker too that's disappointing I didn't really set the hook but came on there so late I thought we were just gonna flip it out so we did go back to the Hornet 3 here Nice grayling. Once again, nice grayling. This will help um, help the the bottom line for the day quite a bit. That was amazing. I hope you fully understand what happened there. That was pretty, pretty incredible. Just out of nowhere.
It'd be tough to get a fish at this time, but we get another cast or two. Oh, I just had a feeling that might have been our brown trout, but come on, it's way more than 500 grams if it's a brown trout. Uh, that actually looks like an asp, doesn't it? Okay. Aspy. We've ended up with 50 fish on the day. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's a chub. All right, let's go back to the, uh, the brown trout corner here. goodness it's like brown trout on demand we set it up we hit it so it's like midnight we just hit it on midnight that's crazy went up to 30 retrieval speed by the way Well, this is perfect. It looks like we're at 52 fish, but after this, we're back down. So we made 83 silver on two cafe orders, 61, 81, 82, 83.10. So pretty cool. Uh, man, I, you know, I don't know. Is there a good day spot on Belaya? I'm off the top of my head, I'm just not sure. Uh, but that's interesting. Um, so that's, you know, so 80 plus 150, I mean, it's just incredible, right? And this is, and this still isn't like prime Belaya weather. 151, look at all those graylings. Get down to the 2.2 chub. See how much more valuable small graylings are though? They really add up. <clears throat> So you can handle a lure loss every once in a while when you're making that kind of silver. Oh, so much fun, so good. I'm glad we, um, I'm glad we went this direction. We've, with, from the start, like we've stayed open to spin fishing and float fishing in a way that, you know, I don't normally do necessarily. So, all right, there's another chapter done. Uh, appreciate the support. I will see you next time.